What is up guys, Karma Medic here, and welcome back to another dose. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Nasser, and I'm now a fourth year medical student studying at King's College London. In today's video, I wanna go through a couple of questions live on camera in preparation for an upcoming medical school exam that I have. Quick disclaimer, I'm by no means claiming that everything I say in this video is gonna be correct. I just think that some people might find some value from watching somebody else go through questions and watching their thinking process, how they extract different pieces of information, and how they go about answering the question. Now, a lot of people, when answering past paper questions, they use them as a method of testing their knowledge and not really as an actual source of information or learning. Personally, I like using a question bank as a learning resource in itself and so as I go through the questions I'm going to be taking notes on why I got a question right why I got a question wrong and what information I think is going to be important in the future and I'm going to be doing all of that over here on the right hand side using Notion I've got an entire video on how I use Notion to take notes like this you can check it out somewhere over here anyways without further ado let's get right into the questions 76 year old man what should be written on line 1a Okay, so I believe line 1A is the most recent, most direct cause of death. So I think it would be the fact that he had um, the pneumonia while he was in hospital. So, hospital acquired right lower lobe pneumonia, I believe would be there. Aspiration pneumonia, I don't have a reason to think it was aspiration pneumonia. Let's see, hands for aspiration, face left side. He wasn't intubated, no swallowing difficulties as far as we know. Okay, great. Well, aspiration pneumonia is common in patients with strokes. Death certification. So, law and ethics, um, or did I have it in MISC? Death certification. Okay, wait, let me move that. Draw X. Copy that here. So, as I've come to know from my friends who are currently doctors, writing death certificates is an important job of an F1. So, I should know quite a lot about it. So, Yep, that was exactly my reasoning for why I didn't put aspiration uh, pneumonia. Let me make sure I write down the thing that made me answer this question correctly, the line of thinking that helped me answer this question, which is line 1A. Next question. Given this man's passage, what's going on? 55% GP with general aches in his joints. Other condition. Okay. So immediately, think when I hear both his father and grandfather died of a liver condition, I'm thinking of some sort of hereditary condition involving the liver. And when I hear is having problem achieving an erection, this immediately makes me think of hemochromatosis, which is answer C over here. So hemochromatosis, well, let's see if I got this right first. Okay, hemochromatosis, you have an overload of iron and the body doesn't know where to put it, so it gets stored in the liver, gets stored in the brain, and some doesn't get stored there. It gets pushed to the liver, to the brain, and it can go to the testicles as well, causing problems with erectile dysfunction. So, so now I wanna find my hemochromatosis notes and add anything onto that that's missing. So, under gastro, hemochromatosis, hemochromatosis. All right, copy paste the notes, and then write down sort of the most important thing. So. So now I want to highlight and make bold important pieces of information. So, bronze skin pigmentation is usually a big clue, but wasn't present in this question. Where is the site of action of furosemide? Wow, direct uh, recall question. Furosemide is a loop diuretic, so it's in the loop of Henle. Now the ascending or the descending loop of Henle. So on the way down, you take out all of the. Oh gosh. I should really know this off by heart. Tons and tons of water. So the action of furosemide is going to be not there, but on the ascending loop of Henley. Great, thank God. <laughs> I should really, really know that off by heart. Okay, so let's go to pharmacology and let's uh, go to where we talk about diuretics. It should be pharmacology, not pharmacy. Pharmacology. This brings me back to first year. Yep, <laughs> seriously, I haven't studied this piece of information in so long. Nah, don't Google the questions, guys. Don't Google the questions. Take an educated guess. All right, next. What is the most likely diagnosis? 57 year old woman, sent with a three month. Otherwise, normal appearance. Okay. Fibromyalgia, unlikely. Um, a lumbar nerve root compression, don't think presents like this. Osteoarthritis very possible, especially with the narrowing of the joint space. Greater trochanteric pain syndrome. That sounds like it could be reasonable. Myralgia, parasthetica, literally never heard of before, but parasthetica, paresthesis, loss of sensory um, innervation, which doesn't sound like this, or sensory feeling, um, which is not what this person is describing, they're describing pain. So between osteoarthritis and greater trochanteric pain syndrome, What's gonna help us differentiate between these two? Three month history of right side hip pain that came on spontaneously. That doesn't really sound like osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is quite progressive. Worse on the outside, which is where the greater trochanter is, isn't it? On the hip bone, on the 
femur. It's going to be more so on the outside of the hips, particularly bad at night when she lies on that side. That's making me think it's not osteoarthritis. I'm going to go with greater trochanteric pain syndrome. Let's see. Correct. It's now the preferred term for trochanteric bursitis. Okay, so what made me know this was greater trochanteric pain syndrome? That's what I want to write down and focus on here. Osteoarthritis is less likely given the palpable nature. Good. And the short duration of symptoms. Good, good. Both things that I thought about. <laughs> yeah, the, comment, the comments are a laugh. They definitely make studying a lot easier. The problem with checking the comments is sometimes you can spend longer getting involved in the comments and reading people's beef and funny things instead of actually answering questions. What action would you take? 33 year old woman. What's important for this question? Woman who is pregnant and has had exposure to varicella zoster virus. So the cutoff is at 20 weeks gestation. Before 20 weeks gestation, we want to give immediate uh, immunoglobulin, okay, which is this varicella zoster immunoglobulin, because the risk of congenital varicella zoster virus syndrome is very high, and that can have really poor effects on the child once they get born. If it's after 20 weeks, then we want to wait, I think, seven days before commencing either this immu immunoglobulin or uh, an antiviral, so like a cyclovir commence. Okay, nice. Chickenpox exposure in pregnancy under 20 weeks, if not immune, give the immunoglobulin. What is the most likely diagnosis? Oof. All right, so a lot of information here. So P anchor antibodies are associated with rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, and Wegner's granulomatosis. No, that's C anchor. Wegner's granulomatosis is C anchor. P anchor is Churg Strauss. Um, oh great, they haven't used the eponyms. I think that's Wegner's. I think this one is Wegner's. Um, Wegner's, which I remember as Wegner's for the Sihanka, but so that means it's not this, so I think it's this one. Granulomatosis with polyangiitis. Churg Strauss is, is uh, P. Anka associated, and the way I remember Churg Strauss is Pabst, Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer, and I remember eosinophilic beer or something like that, so I'm gonna go with eosinophilic. Yes! Okay, let me show you guys that real quick. So if I go to my USMLE step one notes and I search for dirty medicine, and then I go to the on vascular disease, here they are. All right, so Churg Strauss syndrome, eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis, which I remember as Pabst, Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer, Chug Strauss syndrome, Chug and eosinophilic beer. What a, what a memory association. Anyways, um, so that's why it was this. I need a better way of remembering this without the actual names. So let's focus on that now. So Wegner's, the normal name, has a big G in the middle. Wegner's. So immediately it's going to start with granulomatosis. Very strange associations, but sometimes you need those in medicine. Diagnosis of lichen planus is suspected. Very vaguely remember that. What is uh, yeah, I definitely don't know this. Honestly, I just don't know. So I need to answer the question, get it wrong, and then learn from there. So, topical clobetasone butyrate. So let's learn about lichen planus. There we go. In the term question, of course, the answer is steroids. Would have probably been a better guess. What's the most appropriate next step? You're reviewing a patient with COP. Okay. So, if I remember correctly, are there asthmatic features or features suggestive of steroid responsiveness? So, Saba and then Laba plus Lama, which is here. Laba plus Lama. Okay. So, if there is steroid responsiveness, then it's inhaled corticosteroids. Ooh, ECG. ECG shows the following. What do we see here? Very, very high R waves. Probably indicating it's a hypertrophic, uh, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, HOCM. There we go. Yeah. It's a classic presentation. Young, young, healthy, fit person 
um, who has these really big R waves on the ECG. Which is actually great. No, it's obvious. That's the next question. Which of my symptoms is least consistent with a diagnosis of irritable bowel syndrome? So, let's learn. IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, abdominal pain, bloating, or change in habit. I didn't know about mucus in the stool though. Passage of mucus, okay. Let's highlight that and make sure I remember it for next time. Let me get red. Passage of mucus is normal in IBS. All right, next. Uh, what should happen regarding anticoag? Once it's six months. Lifelong orphan. Orphan should be continued indefinitely as this is his second episode of AF and he has risk factors for stroke, age, and hypertension. Next. Which of the following is the biggest risk factor for malignant otitis externa? ENT, man. ENT. Honestly, not sure. I'm gonna guess and try and learn. Diabetes mellitus. Malignant otitis externa is most common in patients with diabetes. Apparently, very common in diabetic patients. All right, been on a bit of a rough stretch here. Three wrong in a row. All right, let's get that percentage up. Urine dipstick shows both blood and white blood cells. What's the best treatment? 20 year old woman who is 16 weeks pregnant presents with pain, passing urine, and an irritating rash. Okay, so we're thinking a urinary tract infection. So hematuria, okay is telling me that this infection has reached further up into the body than just the vulva, okay? Clotrimazole is for a fungal infection. Cephalexin is a ceftriaxone, is a cephalosporin, viral, viral, fungal. Cicular rash actually sounds quite viral to me, um, even though I'm not sure what this is specifically referring to. I'm gonna go with oral, because it sounds quite serious. Okay. The way I deduced the answer to that question is that this rash didn't sound very fungal, and these are both treatments for fungus. They're both ketoconazoles. Um, and then cephalexin is a ceftriaxone, which you would give for a bacterial infection. It didn't really sound very bacterial because of the vesicular rash. That's what made me think either human, human papillomavirus or herpes simplex virus. Um, and then oral is used when you have a more serious infection as opposed to topical. So that's why I went with oral. <laughs> Next. Which of the following medications could be a cause of her pulmonary fibrosis? You're reviewing a 40 year old female general practice who has a new diagnosis of pulmonary fibrosis. Okay. Medication history nitrofurantoin, bisoprolol, warfarin, salbutamol inhaler, and calcium with cholecalciferol. Um. This is a beta blocker, which I do not recall causes pulmonary fibrosis. Warfarin, I also don't recall does that. Salbutamol, no. Calcium with vitamin D, is that gonna cause pulmonary fibrosis? I don't think so. Nitrofurantoin is a treatment for a urinary tract infection. Let's find out. Nitrofurantoin. Somehow I knew this piece of information. <laughs> Nitrofurantoin, drugs causing lung fibrosis. I was thinking along the lines of uh, chemotherapeutic drugs, um, like bleomycin and busulfan. But yeah, nitrofurantoin, did not know that. All right, what's the most likely diagnosis? 26 year old, pelvic pain and smelly discharge. Why don't you tell me, describe the discharge to me. Since she has had the HPV vaccine, I'm gonna go with this is not cervical cancer. She's also quite young, so I'm gonna eliminate that. Ectopic pregnancy, worsening dull pelvic pain. That is not how ectopic pregnancy presents. That's much more acute and much more severe pain. Pelvic inflammatory disease is definitely possible. Dull pelvic pain, smelly discharge, definitely possible. Endometriosis doesn't really present like this. Um, increased pain during menstruation, doesn't present like this. Inflammatory bowel disease, no. 
that would not cause the smelly discharge. Yeah, I'm gonna go with PID. She's young, probably sexually active. Nice. Other infirmities most likely was sufficient. Long duration, sent to her GP. Pain's not severe. Smelly discharge, STI. <laughs> All right, next question. To an old one who is an intravenous heroin user comes review, which one of the following complicates most well as a result of her drug use? Seizures, no. Osteoporosis, peptic ulcer disease, no. Schizophrenia, venous thromboembolism, intravenous heroin user. I'm gonna go with VT. Nice. Opioid misuse, schizophrenia is not going to be caused by that. There is such a thing as drug induced psychosis, um, but that's not the same as schizophrenia. Alright, next. What's more important advice to give? You receive a letter from an Yes, that rings a very strong bell. This is for the risk of neutropenia, I believe, that can come with taking carbimazole. That rings a very strong bell, so I'm gonna go with that. Okay, granulocytosis, yes, okay. So, carbimazole. Next. That's a long one. What's the most important time evaluating this patient? 24 year old man. So, weight loss, fatigue, and a lump in the testicle. Not good. No past medical history, no regular medication, sexually active, does not drink alcohol or smoke, okay. No other symptoms other than large, non-tender, left testicle, clinical examination, not revealed abnormality. There's no palpable lymphadenopathy and no gynecomastia, okay. So this definitely sounds like a testicular tumor. As a marker. Ah. First line investigation of a testicular mass is an ultrasound. Reproductive. Ah, oh, really annoyed I got that wrong. I should definitely have gotten that right. So oncology, testicular cancer. Yeah, ultrasound is first line. I've written it down before. It's getting close to two, which is when me and Nor usually have lunch and I'm quite hungry. Um, so how many questions do we have here? 18. I'll do 19 and 20 and then we'll stop. What is this? 34 year old man. This rash definitely rings a bell. Ah. Uh, it was something like a yellow waxy rash on the soles of the feet. That rings a bell. Karatoderma planaragica. What a random. What a random, random thing. Reactive arthritis features. Keratoderma planaragica. I know I've written this down before. I remember it. Keratoderma, there it is. Keratoderma blenorragica, waxy yellow soles. I remember that. Final question, what treatment should be initiated? A five-year-old boy. <laughs> Panic membrane is not visible due to debris. What's the debris? Why have there been so many ENT questions <laughs> during this session? Um, I'm gonna go with that. Great. Child has classic symptoms of otitis externa, like cause after swimming on holiday. Okay guys, I think I'm gonna end this here. I'm really hungry and I can hear Nora preparing lunch in the kitchen. So we got a score of 70%, which isn't great. It's not too bad either. Um, it's just fine. I've definitely learned quite a few things when answering the questions today and I hope you have as well. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like on it and also subscribe to my channel to see more content from me in the future. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. But to start. Whoops, touched the lens too much there.